Judah Kimono meditates in his chambers on board the Quantum Rest. Hyperspace travel always made meditation more pleasant to Judah. The emptying of his mind while traveling outside space and time made his connection to the living force feel even more precise. His next move was clear. He must find the goddess. We're approaching our destination. Rain spoke over intercoms. Judah enters the cockpit as they exit hyperspace. It became clear in the offspring of his thought what Baron meant by the goddess. My senses have become clear on what Baron told me. The goddess isn't a person. It's a planet. Not just any planet! Rain stressfully ran his fingers across one of his ears. I'm reading energy signals, and the electromagnetic pulse emitting from the core is too strong for any electrical engineering. We can't fly old Rusty down there without losing any power. We'll crash. I doubt even your lightsaber will work down there. Baron told me this is where I must go. It feels right. The Force brought me here. You don't get it, Judah. We could take a pod down there, no problem, but how are we getting off that rock? Once we're down there, we're stranded! The Force is our friend, one who never leaves its servants stranded. I'll find a way back. Oh, if you think you're going alone, you're gravely mistaken. Pack your things. We'll take one of the pods. Waddle, you're gonna have to stay. Judah rolled his eyes. Very well. Glad to have you at my side. As old Rusty shimmers into its invisible state, the pod shoots out and nosedives towards the unknown. Crowds of Jedi gather in the halls of the monastery. It had taken them most of the present day and the day before to get them to return. Amidst the hustle and bustle, Baron Kuroda and Sedona Ricci call for their attention. The floor is given to Master Kuroda. You're curious, I know, but you've been gathered into one place because the future of the Jedi depends on it. For your safety, we couldn't risk having this meeting during the ceremonies, but now that you are here in secret, we can begin. My name is Baron Kuroda. I understand there's been rumors and questions circling around my presence, like where I come from, who I am, and what my purpose is. I'm from Ossus, born and raised in the Jedi Temple. I was a Force Seer for many years before I volunteered a position in their Guardian Ministry during the war against the Rakata Empire. What is this nonsense? A Jedi cried out, The Rakata Empire is old folklore, and there hasn't been an active monastery on Ossus since the Skywalker Prophet. I, you speak truthfully. And before Luke Skywalker was Grand Master of the Order, before the Clone Wars, before the High Republic waged a war against the Nile, before Revan claimed the mask of Mandalore, I was a Jedi serving the Force on Ossus 10,000 years ago. Murmurs and whispers erupted. Allow me to explain. I was on a mission halfway across the galaxy during the war against the Rakata. I carried with me knowledge of a coming threat beyond the years of my people. I had no long-range communications at the time, so my only hope was to get to Ossus as quickly as I could. I made a navigational error, believing it to be a shortcut. I found myself trapped in the gravitational pull of a world known at the time as the Spider's Web. While I was there for but a couple of hours, by the time I escaped the Spider's grasp, the galaxy was a very different place. I landed on Ossus, and what was once a rocky desert was now a grassy plain. But I believe I was destined to arrive when I did, for the days of this coming threat is upon us, and only together can we defeat this foe. What is this threat you speak of? Sedana's eyes dart to Baron. 
There may be servants of this darkness in this very room. For that reason, trust the Force for now, but in time you may know all the truth. Until then, we will reorganize into a single unit with a singular focus to protect the future of the light side. With my ancient knowledge of the Force and your modernized martial arts, we will create a Jedi Order that will ensure peace, freedom, justice, and security across the galaxy. In an epic display of Force power, lotus flowers bloom from the marble flooring. The crowds of Jedi gasp, then smiled and cheered in unison. It was nearly unanimous. But Master Zazen Fisto was unconvinced. He breaks through the crowd. You suggest some of us here are traitors. You withhold valuable information from us, and now you and the Grand Master have decided for us that we be corralled into your own militia. This isn't the Jedi way I signed up for. This is a Jedi Empire, and I will have no part in it. As Master Fisto left, other older masters followed. Dato nearly went with them, but she hesitated. Perhaps she'll see where this is going before making a hasty decision. You understand that by leaving you cast suspicion on both you and your colleagues? Baron challenged. Zazen's walk toward the exit slowed. He turned one last time to Baron and the crowd surrounding him. I understand, he concluded, that by taking the floor and declaring such absolutes, you incite further division and confusion. And until this matter is resolved, I take a vow of silence. Master Zazen Fisto proceeded out the door without another word. Your silence does nothing but enable the enemy, Baron growled. Those who wish to serve the living force, gather your necessities. We have quarters established for you all. The Jedi dispersed. Sedona looked dismayed. Baron took notice and confidently whispered close, we're doing the right thing. They'll see in time. They will. The crashed pod waved a flag of black smoke in the background as Judah and Rain get their bearings on the environment. I see no sign of intelligence. Or water. This is a great situation you just got us into. Hey, you didn't have to come. Well, if there's any civilization, it's gonna be near running water. And the most likely place for running water is those mountains. I don't know, Rain. Something about going south feels right. Like I've been here before. That's further into the desert, Judah. I know it, how it sounds, Rain, but I can't shake the feeling. You go on ahead. I'll catch up to you if I don't find anything by sundown. I won't question the Jedi and their wacky ways. May the Force be with you, friend. I'll keep my ears up. Goodbye, friend. May the Force be with you, too. And in the brightest hour of the day, the two friends separated, each to an unknown of their own choosing. What incredible things they will both find. And what incredible things they are not prepared for in the slightest.